Welcome, and thank you for coming back to Mark's Workbench. So, back to the framing saw build. Uh, this is where I left you, I think, last time. I'm working on marking out the blade positions and then where the tenons will go. The tenons are shallow and they have a curve on the shoulder, so the framing saw, once stressed by the string at the top, uh, will put the blade under tension at the bottom. You'll see more of this um, later on when I, when I start to add the blade and the string. I need to apologise up front. One of my cameras has the time and date stamp on it and the time stamp isn't even correct, which makes it worse. It was pointed out to me on my last video by Barney's Workshop. I'll leave a link below, he does some nice stuff. Um, uh, but unfortunately, without re-recording the video, I can't get rid of it. So I'll fix it for next time, Barney. The first framing saw build that I watched was one by Paul Sellers. And you will see I used um, some of his techniques to mark out the shoulder cuts. I've watched as many uh, YouTube videos as possible on this uh, build um, as I wanted to learn from people who have made this before. The handle shaping, for example, came um, from, well, it's similar to Mr. Chickadee's build, uh, but I haven't seen one with scarf joint in it yet, so um, I think that's a first. Anyway, uh, let's get back on with the build and uh, we'll move forward with uh, cutting the tenons. So here I'm taking the tenons and using them to mark out mortises. This is something I still struggle with actually cutting mortises um, and I've been wondering whether I need a mortise chisel uh, instead of the, the Stanley Perrin chisels that I've got and whether that would make it easier for me. Uh, to be honest I just think I need to improve my technique so it becomes quicker. Um, if you have any thoughts on this please comment below. Um, and. Uh, let me know. Um, I've been starting to watch a lot of different videos on cutting mortises um, to try and get a technique together to make it simpler. Thank you. 
So this is one of Paul Sellers techniques. Um, I'm using a can to get the curve for the shoulders. Uh, you would have seen when I was cutting the tenon uh, with the saw that I had two lines marked. So I had the center of the tenon, um, which I cut square down to, and then I rolled the saw back and forward to cut the curve in. Um, I've got to get the same curve now cut um, in the uh, in the mortise front on the shoulders of the mortise uh, and uh, to do that I'm, I've used a tin to draw around and make sure I get the same angle on both. I'm building this saw as I want it for resawing timber. This is where you have timber which is usually fairly thick and you want to cut down through the end grain and create individual boards from that thickness. This is something I've struggled with um, in the past as um, the equipment that I've got hasn't enabled it to be easy. I've tried using the table saw which gives, uh, because of the depth of the boards, quite often you can't get all the way through. Um, and as I said on my other video, I've had problems with my table saw not cutting squarely which I'm, I'm hoping I'll be able to resolve soon. Um, so I'm looking forward to using this saw and hopefully you'll see it in action in the future.
getting towards the end of the build here and I'm just fitting the blades. I've drilled through where the holes will be for the screws to go through and having a bit of trouble getting the blade in. And then I realized that where I've drilled through, I've obviously left um, some burrs on the inside where I cut the slots. So I'll just have to clean those out with the saw and then the blade fits in nicely. Just screwing in through now uh, to secure the blade in position on the arms. And then I will be moving on to the, um, don't know what to call it, the tensioning stake. It's the piece of wood that goes around the string and you wind it round and round and round. So a winding stick maybe. Um, and it tensions the blade up. Um, so I'm just going to start making that now.
really pleased with this saw build. The scarf joint wasn't perfect, uh, so I have much more to learn there. But for my first one, it's proved to be absolutely solid. I've finished the saw off with a single coat of Danish oil. Um, I think it really makes the, uh, the wood pop, um, and it's my preferred finish at the moment. So thank you for joining me on this build, and I look forward to seeing your comments. In the meantime, stay safe, happy woodworking, and bye for now.